Welcome back guys to another awesome Unity tutorial. I'm your host BliskinX and today we're going to be focusing on the tile map. Now we did this over on our Construct series but I also just wanted to bring this series up to speed for those of you that are keen to use Unity as your preferred IDE when creating games. Now what we need to do, I'm going to pick up from the last tutorial with regards to player movement that we currently just have but I'm going to be doing the tile maps in this specific project. So if you did focus on our last tutorial you will basically catch up with that using um, the previous project. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our tile map. So to do that, we need to load in our sprite. Now, I've got a pre-downloaded sprite. I'm going to put links in the description below that's going to help you guys um, use that as well. And if you've got your own artworks, feel free to go ahead and do that as well. It's entirely up to you. So I've gone ahead here, and you can see I've gone ahead and put in the uh, sort of dragged it across, put it in, and it's brought up this tile map. Right, so it sets it as a single, but because we know that there's so many elements to the specific sprite, so that you can see all the different flooring here, I need to set that as a multiple because it's multiple elements. And then I'm going to go and set the pixels. Now I do know that every basically block that I'm going to be working with cell in within the sprite is 16 by 16. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to 16 by 16, and then I'm going to click apply so that I know that it has that already set. The next vital thing is to go and slice this up. So we're going to click on our tiles over here and click on the sprite editor. And here you can see it's all our little elements. I'm going to go ahead and click on slice and drop the automatic down to grid by cell size. And then I'm going to click uh, change this here. You can see it's got it 64 by 64. I'm going to go and change that to 16 by 16 because we know that there are 16 by 16. I'm going to go ahead and slice it. Yeah, you can see it's all the perfect. If you do need to put padding, if your sprite does have a one border pixel, you can go ahead and add the padding. If there's an offset, you get the idea. Go and put your pixels in. Right, so I'm going to go and click slice and then I'm going to click apply. This might take a few seconds. It's going to then go and slice it all up for me. And once it's done that, yeah, you can see on the left-hand side all the different little sprites within this element. I'm going to go ahead and close this because now we know that we've got basically all our blocks specifically exactly how we need it. Right, so the next vital thing we're going to go do is create a new tile map. So we're going to right-click on the object side here and we're going to go create 2D object and we're going to click tile map. And then it's going to give you a grid object and inside this grid object we're going to have our tile map. Now we can have multiple tile maps just to be clear. But the first one we're going to call this the base because we know that that's going to be the ground. Essentially anything above that will be like objects or even height if there needs to be a ramp or stairs then we can use one level ahead. So we're going to use this one first as the base. I'm going to call that base for now. And I'm going to set the, yeah, you can see on the left hand side that is order in layer is set to zero. Every time we add a new one, let's hire that by one so that we know that this is the base level and whichever one we're working on, we can ensure that changing those respectively will make the correct changes. Okay, so now that we've got our tile base set there, we can go ahead and create a new palette. Now, if you haven't created a palette folder yet, we'll do that now. We're going to click on the right hand side. And to do that, we're going to go over to Window. And then we're going to go over to, I think it is 2D, if I'm not mistaken. And you're going to click on the tile palette, right? Over there, I'm just going to bring it up in your in your, your visual loader here. And then I've dragged mine to dock it straight over here. Okay. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and create a new palette. And you can call this ground if you want to, or tile map, or whatever it is that you need to call it, tile map. Um, ground palette, so we know which one we're working with. I'm going to go ahead and click create, and it's going to open up here. And I'm going to make a new folder. Let's call this new folder uh, palettes, just to so that we have the naming conventions done correctly. Palettes, and inside here we can go with our ground palette. Give it another new folder, so we keep everything nice and tidy. Um, ground. Let's do that case sensitive as well. Ground. Fantastic. Right, and then we can go ahead and select that folder. So done that, select, and now we've got our tile map. Now what we need to do is we need to drag in these tiles straight into this tile map, okay? So the best way to do that effectively is to go ahead onto our artwork where we've got the backgrounds, as you saw. Now, a lot of guys make this common mistake where they go and grab and shift select and they drag all of it. That can be problematic and I'm going to show you that much later to why. What I want you to do, it just organizes it incorrectly when you do that. But if you use the host, which is the primary object, this one here, and drag that across, that is the best practice you can do. So I'm going to click on this, drag this across, and I'm going to load it straight in here. Okay, and I'm going to save this under my tiles. And we're going to select that folder. I'm going to overwrite, obviously. And that will then import all these tiles straight into the tile folder. So give that a second. Obviously, there's 355 of those, so it will take a second or two. And then once they come in, we can let the magic happen. 
Right, fantastic. So there we can go ahead and see there's all our artwork. And now really, it's going to be a lot easier to, we're just gonna go ahead and zoom this out on our scene over here. Yeah, we can see the pixels. If we need to click on the tile base, you can set the, the uh, cell size accordingly um, on the grid if you need to, but I'm gonna leave that as standard for now because I know that it is standard. So basically guys, it's really simple. We're gonna go ahead and use our brush tool. So let's take a couple of walls here for argument's sake. Take those three walls. We can go ahead and paint our awesome little scenes now. We can take a floor, we can even drag and copy that across have the different floors, have the different walls, essentially. You get what I'm going. This is the part where you're gonna to wanna to focus a lot of time ensuring that your game design looks slick and tidy, and this is where all this magic happens. So I was gonna share what this looks like, and I'll go ahead and click play, just to give you an idea. There it is there, the different attributes. These are different objects as well that we can use, and we'll use it in objects, I'll show you that later, but if you're using them for props, essentially, that it does not have any sprite animation, we can go ahead and obviously use those as well. So if we go ahead and play that now, just to show you what that looks like, there you can see is our little character, obviously, with the animations that we had created, and we will obviously set collisions and so forth, but effectively, this is what it's going to be looking like. So that's pretty awesome. Now, if you wanted to add another one and to build up to on top of this, really, so let's take these stairs for argument's sake. I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush tool, and let's take these stairs here. Now, you'll notice that if I put these stairs over this, it goes ahead and overwrites it uh, accordingly. Let's take this one, it's probably better, these two, because we know that there's a, a so I'm gonna go put this stair here and this stair here. You'll see that it overwrote that other block because you want that to be a background because this is a transparent. So how we solve that problem, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uncheck that and just put a floor there again just to give you guys an idea. So what we do is we go ahead and we create a new tile map and really just right clicking here saying new, um, where we can click on tile map which is under 2D objects and we can say tile map again and we can call this, let's say upper level or however you wanna rename it. So I'm gonna call this tile map um, let's call it top, maybe. Top for now, just the purpose of this demonstration. And then I'm gonna go and set the order layer to one, okay? Now, instead of copying everything over again, basically over the active tile map, you can go ahead and select the top. It's now, obviously there's the base. We can go ahead and set the top. And it still gives us the palette. That was the reason for the palette. We didn't load it straight into the like constructors where that is the tile map with the assets available. We have basically said, this is my palette. These are my different grids. You make use of the grids set the layer accordingly. We can obviously use um, a layer by sorting as well, and then go ahead and paint it. So now I'm gonna use my top layer, and now if I go ahead and put my stairs, you could say, I'm gonna have this background effect. You see that there? So now I've got the background to it, giving it that depth opposed to having it empty. Right guys, so that is it with today's tutorial with regards to how to use tile maps in Unity. Now we will be focusing again on animations and sprites in our next tutorial in terms of props and to show you how flames would work and torches, etc. I'm trying to get this up to speed with our construct series and eventually we can head across to the attacks, the movements, as well as the enemy AI uh, abilities as we've done on Construct. We're gonna be hopping straight over to those videos shortly. And uh, if you guys are new here, please give us a like as well as a thumbs up, a subscribe if you wanna call it that. And we look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.